In the past, I have done some 3DFX related content, and today I want to add to the list of videos that keeps the 3DFX spirit alive. Literally. Because today, we are going to have a look at this non-working 3DFX card, which I got from Mike in Germany, while I was there for a few days. Thank you Mike for the card and the opportunity to make a video about it. So, what is wrong with this card? The system boots, but there is no VGA output. The third card on this channel with the same symptom. I already fixed an Elsa Synergy 2 having the same problem. All I had to do to revive the card was to flash the VGA BIOS. And then there was the GeForce 2 MX, with the same issue. Unfortunately, this card wasn't that simple. A BIOS flash was unsuccessful and I had to replace the BIOS chip. In today's video, we will have a look at this 3DFX Voodoo 3. Again, no VGA output, but the system seems to be booting. At least there are no error codes coming from the PC speaker. Similarly to the Synergy 2 and the GeForce 2 MX, I suspect a corrupted VGA BIOS. However, every case is different, and this time it's a 3DFX card, while the other two cards are Nvidia cards. We will use new tools to flash the BIOS, compare the corrupted BIOS with a working file downloaded from the web, and add components that are currently missing from the card. I want to add the capacitor that has been knocked off next to the memory, as well as the heatsink for this voltage regulator. Since there is no video output from the Voodoo card, I can't see anything on the screen. To get a video signal, we can simply add a second video card to the system. When picking a second video card, I usually pick a card which is a couple of years older than the card I want to fix. Having a secondary card from a different manufacturer with a different chipset helps to avoid flashing the wrong card accidentally. This method worked every single time I tried and the video signal was generated by the working video card. With a video signal available, we can also boot into Windows. The Device Manager or other system information tools can provide helpful information about the broken card. The Voodoo 3 is listed under Display Adapters, but with a yellow exclamation mark due to the missing drivers. The fact that the card is listed here is a very good sign. Before we attempt to flash the BIOS, we have to get the flashing utility and the BIOS binary suitable for this Voodoo 3. The flashing utility I'm going to use today is suitable for Voodoo Banshees and Voodoo 3s. You will find a link to this website in the video description, in case you also need to flash the BIOS of your 3DFX video cards. Unlike the flashing utility, finding the correct BIOS file is more challenging. We need to know exactly what model we have here to select the correct file. As you can see, here are different BIOS versions for different Voodoo 3 models. But we can already eliminate BIOSes for AGP cards, because our model has a PCI interface. We also need to know what type of memory this card has. Voodoo 3s were available with SD and SG RAM. Visually, you should be able to distinguish SD from SG RAM by looking at the package of the chips. Chips with pins on all four sides are likely SG RAM, while chips with pins on two sides only are most likely SD RAM versions. To be certain, you can always look for a datasheet of the memory. Now we just need to know if this is the 2000 or the 3000 model of the Voodoo 3. The only difference between the two models are the clock speeds. The Voodoo 3 2000 has a GPU and memory clock of 143 MHz, while the Voodoo 3 3000 has a GPU and memory clock of 166 MHz. By looking at the PCB, we cannot tell if this is the 2000 or the 3000 model. So, let's look for clues. Many Voodoo 3 3000 cards have this big aluminum heat spreader. But will this be enough to make a conclusive decision what model this is? The model I have here has a blue heatsink, and the heatsink is a bit larger than the heatsink on my other Voodoo 3 2000. And the memory is rated at 6 nanoseconds, which should be capable to work at a frequency of 166 MHz. Maybe it is a 3000 model after all. But I tend more towards a 2000 than a 3000 model for now. When the flashing utility saves the current BIOS, we will be able to identify the card by looking at the backup file. But for now, I assume this to be a Voodoo 3 2000 PCI with SD RAM. With the files copied to a test system and booted to DOS, we can fire up the flashing utility. The 3DFX flashing utility is very basic, but it does provide this little help screen. Here we learn that while a new BIOS is flashed, the old BIOS is stored as save.rom.
Let's flash the BIOS of this Voodoo 3 using a BIOS file of a Voodoo 3 2000 with PCI interface. And this is a very unspectacular flashing process. What do you prefer? This? Or the blinking crazy screen from WF Flash? Once the tool is done, we are informed to turn off the system for the changes to take effect. While the system is turned off, we can also remove the second video card. Hopefully, flashing the BIOS has revived this Voodoo 3. And now we wait, in anticipation of a 3DFX splash screen. Okay, so this voodoo card is alive. At least it shows a picture for now. I will test some games later, but first let's have a look at the backup of the original BIOS and compare it with the one we downloaded from the internet. I first open the extracted BIOS with a hex editor. And finally, we can verify that my model here is a Voodoo 3 2000. You can see the model number clearly here in the first couple of lines in the BIOS file. Let's compare this BIOS, which came from the Voodoo 3, with a Voodoo 3 2000 BIOS file downloaded from the website I showed you before. And yes, there is already the first difference. In fact, there are a few differences. 9 bytes to be exact. It is a bit odd that they are all concentrated at the beginning of the file and right next to each other, as if a word in a sentence is replaced by something else. I wonder if this is really unreliable data from an old BIOS chip, or this is just a regular version with a few updated values. Here is a summary of all 9 differences, their position, value and bit representation. This is very different compared to the Synergy 2 BIOS, which looked more like 3 bits have actually flipped. But somehow I am not convinced that this BIOS is the root cause of no VGA output. I really wonder what would happen if I flash the original BIOS back to the card. The expectation would be to end up with no VGA output. You know what? Let's try that. Let's see what happens when we flash the original BIOS back to the card. Ok, I renamed save.rom to broken.rom, which contains the BIOS extracted from the card before flashing the Voodoo 3 3000 BIOS. I am really curious if we get the original behavior back. Basically, no VGA output. Ok, the old BIOS is back on the card. Let's power cycle the system and see what happens. I have no explanation for this. If you have any idea how this card works now even though I flashed the original BIOS, which clearly had something to do with a non-working card we have seen at the beginning of this video, then please let me know in the comments. The flashing process must have triggered something to make this card work now, but it may not have been the BIOS code after all. Although the card seems to be working with the old BIOS, I do not trust it and I will replace it with the Voodoo 3 2000 BIOS downloaded from the website linked in the video description. Let's move on with a few repairs. As I mentioned before, the card misses one capacitor and a heatsink for a voltage regulator. I have seen quite a few cards where those capacitors next to the memory chips are missing. Looks like they can easily get knocked off, most likely while storing the cards with other components. I am sure this could also happen when the card is carelessly removed from the motherboard. And just to be sure, I will check the neighboring capacitors as well. A damage may not always be easily visible. Like this capacitor here looks a little bit odd. I will remove it, measure its value and if it's ok, put it back on the card. But for those pads, I need a new capacitor. Luckily I still have a few spares. Those capacitors may not seem to make a difference since the card is working without them. But most likely they will improve the stability of the card at higher frequencies and help filtering electronic noise. Great, all three capacitors are back on the card next to the memory. But now let's move on to a critical part that is absolutely required for this card. The voltage regulator heatsink. I don't know why the heatsink is missing, but all the Voodoo 3s I have seen have a heatsink attached to this regulator. Unfortunately, I don't have a spare heatsink that would fit this regulator. For now, I will just borrow the heatsink from the other Voodoo 3 that I have restored a few months ago. Once I get a few of those heatsinks, I will put one back on this card as well. 
The heatsink is attached to the PCB with a screw and a nut on the other side. There is no thermal compound between the PCB, heatsink and the voltage regulator. I am not sure if thermal paste between the regulator and the heatsink will make a huge difference, but I will add some anyway. When I get the spare heatsinks to fix up the other Voodoo 3, I may have to look at it using my thermal camera. Now we just have to screw everything together and we should be done with the restoration of this Voodoo 3 card. Now let's have a quick look at a few games. First up is Black and White, a game released in 2001 by Lionhead Studios. During the intro, which was very memorable and seamless for a game at that time, we can see that some textures seem to be missing. But with a patch and newer drivers, the game looks like I remember it. All textures render correctly and I had to restrain myself drifting off and playing for hours. The Voodoo 3 is installed on an ASUS P3BF with a Pentium 3 1GHz and although the CPU and the memory should be sufficient, the Voodoo 3 is already struggling to render the game at a resolution of 800x600. Maybe that is not surprising since the game was released 2 years after the Voodoo 3. I also tried Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed and Unreal, which performed much better. This Voodoo 3 2000 is now fully functional and completed benchmarks and games without crashes, artifacts or any other abnormal behavior. I also cleaned the card. The only thing missing is to install a fan and keep it for some interesting content in the future. Should I dare to flash this card with a faster BIOS and turn it into a Voodoo 3 3000? Do you think there is a difference in terms of overclocking headroom between the BIOS of a Voodoo 3 2000 and a Voodoo 3 3000? Could one BIOS allow for better overclocking results? If you don't want to miss this, then please subscribe to my channel so you get notified whenever I upload a new video. And please leave a like if you enjoyed today's video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.